Almost two years ago, Anders Breivik went on a murder spree in Norway, bombing government buildings before killing 69 people, mostly teenagers, at an island summer camp. Breivik said he was motivated by a desire to save Norway and Europe from an Islamic takeover. After the attack, Britain added far-right extremism to its anti-terror strategy. At a recent forum on far-right extremism, Britain's Minister for Crime and Security, James Brokenshire, said one in ten cases of extremism being tackled by the government concerns the far-right. It is not insignificant that the biggest arms cache found in England in recent times had been amassed by a bus driver motivated by such ideology. Investigations showed Anders Breivik was not an active member of a far-right network, but he did contribute regularly to nationalist and Islamophobic online forums. Alexander Meliagru Hitchens is head of research at the International Centre for the Study of Radicalisation at King's College London. When Breivik carried out his attack, what you saw from counter-jihad uh, activists was an attempt to uh, excuse if, if, or perhaps contextualise the attack and essentially say, look, um, though we don't condone um, this type of targeting of civilians, um, we believe that this is going to continue to happen if you don't listen to us. Breivik was known to admire the anti-Islam English Defence League, or EDL. It has helped set up similar leagues across Europe. In August last year, far-right activists from across Europe gathered in Sweden. Among them was the EDL's founder, who calls himself Tommy Robinson. It's about us sharing ideologies, sharing resources and um, working together, planning where we're going to go over the next 12 months in order to highlight the truth, the truth about Islam. Meliagru Hitchens says the counter-jihad movement is different from 20th century far-right groups like the British National Party in its focus on Islam. This movement is, is, is certainly one of the many consequences of 9-11. Um, however, uh, there are other, other elements involved here, including uh, the issue of mass immigration in Europe. The British government calls the far-right radicals it is tackling self-starting groups and individuals. Again, Britain's Minister for Security, James Brokenshire. The far-right threat is not as widespread or systematic as the Al-Qaeda-inspired threat. And operationally, there are vast differences. But we also notice that at the same time, at its core, the far right appeals to people who share many of the same vulnerabilities as those exploited by Al-Qaeda-inspired extremism. Brokenshire says those include issues of alienation and identity that are being debated across Europe at a time of economic uncertainty. Henry Ridgewell for VUA News, London.